Who can forget the Brisbane floods of 2011? Boats and wharves washed away downstream with the sheer force of water. But the really great story is what happened next. It was just massive for Brisbane. There was the human impact, damage to property. It was about a $400 million problem for the city wow. in terms of infrastructure. And the ferry terminals made up around 100 million of that. Because this is such an important part of the city, uh, and the river, the culture of Brisbane, the life of Brisbane, uh, we wanted it not just to be functional, we wanted it to be beautiful. So you put out an international competition, is that right? Yeah, we wanted the best and we got the best. So Brendan, tell me, how does this actually work? So this component, which is the gangway, takes up the slack between high and low tide. The marker is the only solid part of what we're standing on. All the other componentry floats. Then a flood, there's a buoyancy tank standing right below us here, it lifts the gangway up, detaches from the knuckle, and it actually swings around downstream, remaining safe from damage. 2011 was a one in 100 year event, so these are designed for five times that. So sure it's a pontoon, but it's got this real feel of a piazza out on the river. So people use this day and night. The council's installed free Wi-Fi, so people are encouraged to linger here right. and tap away, do their homework. We really wanted to reconnect people with the river. That's what it was about. From disaster in 2011, these ferry wharves are a really clever marriage between architecture and engineering. But more importantly, they're here to stay. Everybody secretly wants to live on the beach. And here at Palm Beach on the Gold Coast is a powerful place to live the dream. Hi, Alicia. Welcome. Thank you. Wow, this is a fabulous arrival space. And this is what it's all about. Just love the way the view just keeps opening up here. Yes, it's spectacular. The beach comes right into the house. I just wanted a normal family home without all the whistles and bells. I love the look of concrete, I love the feel of concrete, I love how it's solid and feels protective. This beautiful bench top was cast right here on site. Wow. It's very big and it's very heavy and it's ageing beautifully, little signs of everyday wear, red wine stains from parties gone by. We love it. So you have five bedrooms upstairs here. Are they all still occupied? No, most of our children have left home now to go to university. But we wanted to future-proof the house. We wanted to make a home that the children would come back to with their own families. Why wouldn't you? I know, it's fantastic. Concrete's a product that you would think would be easy to work with, but it's not. It's quite complex, takes a lot of design. This is a real look no hands kind of moment here. Yeah, there was an earlier option of, you know, column, 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 column along here, but really, you know, this is what we wanted to achieve. Serves a little folly here with the concrete uh, cantilevering out, which followed on through to mimic the cantilever of the structure over. Strong enough to hold up a football team? Uh, probably just the front row, yeah. At, uh, and probably not the All Blacks. <laughs> <laughs> right. This house exudes confidence and casual strength to embrace the realities of salt air living. It's an elegant and subtle place filled with light to live the dream. Studies have been done where children react to their surroundings. I mean, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer for me that, you know, they'll, they'll react well to good architecture, particularly architecture that, that, that is about security, about safety and security. So this is the old entry to the kindergarten and this was the, the point at which parents would drop their children off. It wasn't protected um, in terms of weather, it was insecure and there was a feeling that they needed a, a separate waiting space to the gate. So this is it, this is the space, this is where the parents and the children meet. You've got some great volume in here. Yeah, and that was a conscious decision about taking advantage of the views and also the cross ventilation with the louvers. And then the use of the plywood to wrap down to the back as well. So there's some use of sustainable materials, both on the uh, ceiling as well as to the floors. Keeping in mind that it needs to be a healthy space for both children and adults. It's a space that has a number of uses and therefore has a long life associated with it. 
So Paul, this lovely low window is obviously for the kids. Yes, it was about the scale of a child. Yeah, this becomes a seat, it becomes a place for them to occupy. And they get to watch Bob the Postman turn up. They not only get to see him, but they get to actually greet him as well. There's a really nice interaction there. And that's about creating memories for the children. So this is another memorable part of the building. It's a statement and it's got a variety of bricks that have been used in different textures and different layouts as well. The building was on a really tight budget, so we had bricks actually donated as seconds. The actual layout was based around what was available. Begged and borrowed, this project assembles the bricks and the glass in a really clever and creative way and delivers a really comfortable space that will nurture the next generation of young Queenslanders.